Hey everybody, just going to have a little sermon summary for you for the last teaching in this Renovate series. And we're talking about the all-in moment. Now in real renovation, this is what an all-in moment looks like, right? Man, if you've been wanting to start a remodel project, just do what this guy's doing. And you know what? There's no turning back. It's time to remodel. It's funny because I can tend to procrastinate home projects, but this is what motivates you. Go ahead and knock a hole in that wall, and then you're ready. You're going for it. And so when you think about an all-in moment, I believe all change requires this. And this is especially true spiritually. I believe that the reason that some people have not experienced their all-in moment yet is because they're sprinkling in Christianity instead of making Christ their life, actually making it their life. So I want to share with you a passage of Jesus having a conversation with a few different people about what it means to follow him. So in Luke 9, 57, it says, As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. There's a lot of things to say about this passage and so many excuses given, but I think the key point to take away from this is that, again, following Jesus is not something you sprinkle onto your life. It is your life. And Jesus made that clear, even though some of the excuses these guys were given Jesus back in the first century, you know, burying someone that was close to you in your family, going through all the tradition of that burial in that mourning period would sometimes take as long as a year even. So it wasn't like what you and I were thinking, hey, a few days later, I'll come follow you. It was kind of a big, a pretty big procrastination. But even I don't, I'm still not saying that that's probably what was going on here. I think Jesus was being serious. Like, listen, if if, if you think following me means you're going to have you know wonderful uh, Radisson sleepovers in a nice hotel, I, I'm basically homeless, you know. And if you think that you can just sort of continue to do life as you know it right now and still follow me, then you are sadly mistaken. And I think we need to hear this today. We need to know that Christianity is, is, it is a radical change in your life. This isn't something you sprinkle into the American dream. This is you crushing your dream and letting God tell you exactly what he wants you to do, where he wants you to go, what he wants you to say, and living your life in complete and utter faith and trust in him. That's the life he's called us to live. When I think about an all-in moment, I can't help but think of what happened to the Ethiopian eunuch whom Philip talked to. He, he, he come across this guy reading scripture, and here's what it says happened next in Acts 8.35. So beginning with this same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. And so baptism is a beautiful all-in moment. It symbolizes new life. It, it, it symbolizes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, which is what allows us to have this free salvation opportunity. It's what created the gospel, the good news that we share. But it also symbolizes the person being baptized, that person's death, burial, and resurrection. And so it's a beautiful all-in moment. It's public. Back in the first century, you could have been ostracized by your family if they found out you were baptized, and you certainly were at risk for persecution if you had gotten baptized. But there is an all-in moment that happens before baptism. I believe that happened sometime along in that carriage ride. This Ethiopian guy believed in Jesus. His all-in moment happened before he told the carriage to stop. And then he went and declared that all-in moment he had just had through baptism. For me personally, my all-in moment happened when I was 15 at a Christian camp down in Knott County, Kentucky. I didn't even know what baptism was, but a year later, I heard a sermon on baptism. I'm like, I want that. 
I had my all-in moment of salvation with Jesus Christ and then later learned about baptism and I wanted to be a part of that beautiful symbol that even Jesus had done by declaring my faith through baptism. An all-in moment is required for you to truly experience life change. And so I would ask you, have you experienced your all-in moment yet? If not, Here's the next step that we that came along with this teaching as we close this series on renovation, experiencing the, the, the new you that God wants you to have. It's a simple one word next step, and that is to repent. Repent is a word that simply means to make a U-turn, to turn around. Whatever direction you're going in, you're stopping, and you're committed by completely turning around and going in the opposite direction. I believe the man taking that hammer into the drywall, that is repentance in action. You are all in. There is no turning back. We are in this. We're, we're on this journey permanently. We're not turning back to what was before. We are moving forward with what's new. That is what Jesus preached when he started his public ministry. He would say, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And it's still the best sermon to preach today. Have you experienced repentance? If not, I want to lead us in a word of prayer, a prayer of repentance. You can pray right where you are and experience repentance if you've never done that. There's no certain words you have to use. All you have to do is believe, just like this Ethiopian guy did, just like I did when I was 15. Do you believe are you all in? Are you ready to take your current life and surrender it completely to Jesus and say, I'm done. You now are in charge. I crush my dreams and I want to live out your dream for me. Let's pray. Father, we come before you now and just pray you forgive us of our sins. And Father, I surrender my current life to you and ask that you would give me new life. I don't want to live out my own dreams for my life. I want to live out your will for my life. So today, I completely surrender to you from this day forward. Lord, I ask that you lead me and guide me, and I will trust in you with all my heart and do my best to do everything you ask me to do so that I can experience whatever it is you have planned for me. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you took that step today, or maybe you still haven't been baptized and declared your faith publicly, text next step to 77411. I would love to hear from you. We'll have a conversation and we will encourage you in every way as you continue on your journey of experiencing the real change God has for you.